Hey everybody, Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. I've got a video today to talk to you guys about the proverbial question, what happens uh, to cruise ships if the cruise lines are going to shut down for a while? I mean, this uh, worldwide pandemic we're dealing with here is uh, really fouling things up and uh, there aren't any cruise ships starting new cruises right now. What will the cruise lines do? How do they store their ships what do they have to do um they're trying to raise a bunch of money to survive well let's get into it uh thank you by the way for subscribing to my channel really appreciate all of you uh, now helping me get through the 50,000 plateau and beyond and the thumbs ups you give me for these videos i cannot thank you enough they are so important to the momentum of this channel and also your comments uh, love to hear from you uh, letting me know what you're hearing out there and uh, keeping me updated. Um, thank you also for joining my Facebook group page. If you want to hang out with the TWB family, the Traveling with Bruce family, a lot of us hang out on the uh, Facebook group page. Uh, there's over 3,200 now. It's unbelievable. Also, Instagram, Traveling with Bruce has an Instagram page. Jennifer is handling it. And uh, we're approaching now 600 followers. Oh my gosh, I can't wait for a year from now to listen to this video hear myself talking about the fact that we had 600 followers on Instagram and hopefully by then we'll be in the thousands. So it's always cool to see that happen. We'll cross our fingers, hope for the best. Welcome aboard everybody. Let's talk about the subject at hand today and that is what happens to all of these cruise ships. Every day that goes by they're just sitting in the water um, a couple of miles offshore. A lot of them are just off the coast of Florida bunch of them are in uh, Bahamian waters or just in international waters outside of the Bahamian waters. Um, what's the deal? Um, well, right now, the ships that you see on the news where they'll have a helicopter go in the air and you'll see a ship a couple of miles offshore or people are taking photos from the top floor of their apartment buildings or condos, those ships are are being stored right now in something known as a hot ship layover or hot ship layup. What that means is the uh, the cruise ships out there are pretty well fully staffed and they can be put into action within 24 hours. So if the uh, if by some miracle uh, we find out that listening to Slim Whitman music uh, defeats the virus in a nanosecond, and we all put our headphones on for 30 seconds and listen to Slim Whitman, Whitman, just like they did in the movie Mars, and we're all safe from the virus, and we can go cruising again and flying again and visiting again. Well, these ships could be back in business. As soon as you can get to the pier, they'll meet you there, pick you up, and take you on a cruise. Unfortunately, I don't think Slim Whitman is going to save us this time, uh, but there's always hope. Um, so a hot ship layup is what is happening right now with cruise lines. Now, the second level of storing a cruise ship is something known as a warm ship layup. And, and that's what most of the cruise lines are now going to do. They're going to uh, pretty well take uh, all of their fleets and at the very least go into a warm ship layup mode. And that means that the uh, excess staff that are on board now, for example, uh, uh, folks that work in the casino department, all the entertainers, uh, all the folks that help produce the uh, shows, um, a lot of the room staff, uh, uh, they'll all be uh, uh, basically allowed to uh, have their contracts expire and they will be sent home. And the cruise lines will systematically, every 30 days, reduce their crew fleet size on board these ships. They'll keep the captain on board, of course, and, uh, and key, uh, key uh, support staff in the bridge. All the engineers running the engines will be uh, on board because the engines will still run to generate electricity, keep the uh, air conditioning systems running, all the water systems, uh, sewage, everything, all the water purification, air purification, all that will run. The kitchens will run. The freezers are running. Uh, but as the staff is reduced, uh, say a cruise ship goes from maybe uh, 1,400 crew down to 800 crew, then to 600 crew, you don't have to get as much food anymore. You don't need as many cooks. You don't need as many dishwashers. And so systematically, week after week, the crew level will dissipate down and down and down. And they'll get it down to... Oh, four or 500 crew members uh, easily. They might even bring it down to a couple of hundred. 
and keep the ship in uh, in a warm ship layup layup the ship will still be offshore you'll see it um but it'll come into the port maybe once a week or every 10 days and the ship will pick up some fuel we'll drop off some sewage we'll drop off some garbage pick up some fresh vegetables additional food stuffs any medications that the doctor feels is needed to uh, keep the crew healthy and then the ship will just uh, meander back three miles to 12 miles offshore back in international waters and uh, lays around and wait now, if cruise lines uh, go further than that, and I think some of them will, um, the older ships in the fleet, the ones that we know and we've kind of suspected are probably going to be retired in the next year to three years, those ships might enter, enter what we call a cold layup. Now, a cold layup means you've got minimal staff on board. The, the only staff you have on board now are minimal staff to maintain safety systems, fire suppression systems, 24-hour security. They do um, regular maintenance on the ship for anything that uh, breaks down. Um, but other than that, the ship will be uh, tied up uh, at a port. Um, they'll bring in uh, dehumidifiers, and they'll install a bunch of these all over the ship, especially in the engine rooms where they don't want to have rust form. Keep in mind, folks, a cruise ship any ship is in the water and a cruise ship that's in water is surrounded by a lot of humidity so you got to dehumidify those engine rooms uh with dehumidifiers all the cabin areas where all the cabins are all the doors will be left open and dehumidifiers will be all over the various decks also in all the public areas like the restaurants and uh, the uh, theater anywhere uh you know where there's a a lot of uh you know, air that can saturate with uh, humidity that can cause damage, they're going to have dehumidifiers run, running everywhere. This is to prevent corrosion. All the cabin linens and towels, um, all of the linens in the dining rooms, the tablecloths, all that stuff will be stored in a dry location. It wouldn't surprise me that uh, they either uh, Put all those items in a secure uh, interior room on the ship with a dehumidifier or several ships. Um, or they take everything like that, box it up, take it off the cruise ship, and store it in an on uh, onshore warehouse. All labeled, which deck, which rooms, so on. But it would make sense uh, if they're thinking a three, four month layup, five month layup, that maybe this material would still stay on the ship but would be would be uh, either boxed up and stored on board um, in, in a location where they can keep it very uh, dry. The same thing goes for, of course, all of the costumes from the entertainers. Uh, remember, uh, you know, we were used to these shows every night when you go on a cruise in the, uh, the main showroom. Uh, you've got cast members that are performing for like an hour, hour and 20 minutes. They're doing three costume changes per show. And there's 10, 15, 20 performers, or performers. So you think about how many dozens, hundreds of uh, outfits there are. Those all have to be uh, stored and protected. You don't want them to get dusty or moldy or anything like that. So it's quite a logistic. Uh, down below in the uh, kitchens, all the uh, freezers will be emptied out. There will be nothing in any of the refrigerators down below. And the doors will be opened up to the freezers and refrigerators. All the systems shut down and uh, dehumidifiers installed down there. And um, there will the kitchen will basically be uh, shut right off. Um, all the dishwasher doors will be left open. In other words, anywhere where mold and mildew can form, they don't want it. They want airflow down there and they want it as dry air. So the dehumidifiers will be going. And that's why you have a minimal staff on board the ship to constantly monitor all the dehumidifying systems to make sure that they're up and running and none have failed or, or are faltering and uh, keep everything in, in the best condition possible. There may be a uh, minimal crew uh, on the decks uh, doing um, uh, painting and, and dust pre uh, rust prevention work. Um, there won't be any major work done on these ships, though. That That's going to cost money. Um, you're not going to want to take a ship, let's say, and put it in the dry dock um, and put it on, uh, you know, keel mounts and then uh, work on it. Because if you put a ship in dry dock, that is a $3 million a day bill 
that uh, that uh, cruise lines run into, at least as high as three million bucks a day. Even a minimal dry dock uh, could be a million bucks a day because you might have three or four or five hundred workers on board the ship at union wages, serious money, uh, especially specialists. Um, right now, cruise lines are trying to preserve cash and not uh, not even invest in dry docks. And I've mentioned in a couple of my videos how some of the cruise lines are now postponing dry docks because they're just not going to drop uh, 50 million or 100 million or even 200 million in the case of Carnival to redo an entire cruise ship. So minimal work will be done on the on the decks in some of the levels again by by uh, hired staff or existing staff from the cruise line. This keeps those guys busy. If there's a uh, hundred or so on the ship in a in a in a um, cold uh, um, layup, uh, these hundred uh, you know men and women they're busy. They've got lots to do, and it's a 24-hour security uh, zone. Uh, there's no way that these ships will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, graffitied or, or, or uh, boarded by uh, thrill seekers. There'll be security all over the place to protect these, you know, let's call it 50 to $200 million investments. Uh, even these older ships are still worth $50 million, and you're not going to let anyone mess with that. And so that's what's called a cold layup. If you do a cold layup as a cruise line, uh, because you're not... Um, dealing with staff on board the ship like you would normally have on, 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 say, on a hot layup where you're ready to go in 24 hours, you're talking about saving some serious money here. Um, I did a calculation just for fun where I was thinking, what if you had a 1,000 crew on a ship that you were uh, going to have uh, removed? Um, how much money would you save? And, and I was thinking about this from the, uh, the lowest paid employee right up to the highest paid employee that you're going to drop off. The cost of wages, salaries, and all the food you need to uh, to feed them, and all the fuel you need to generate electricity to keep all the systems running for their le- needs, I'm guesstimating it's two thousand a month per pa- a crew to per crew member. Two thousand a month per crew member as a as a, just a minimum number. I could be low, I could be high, but I thought let's play with that number. If you had a thousand of them, that is two million dollars a month in um, costs. And if you're Carnival and you've got 105 ships, um, I took 100 ships as an example, $200 million a month, the cost of the crew, whether there are paying passengers on board or not. And right now, there aren't. So uh, that's heavy-duty money. Of course, uh, this doesn't include the head office staff and the uh, you know all the legal departments, accounting departments, all the advertising, the rents they're paying, uh, insurance costs they have. It just goes on and on and on and on. Um, You know, people are surprised at how much money cruise lines lose when they're not uh, sailing their ships. Well, you know, these aren't mom and pop operations. These are mega, mega companies. And uh, uh, Carnival was doing $20 billion in revenue a year to give you an idea of how much money they were bringing in. Um, And they were clearing about three odd million in profit. So they're spending 17 billion a year to be in business. It's a billion and a half when you're operating as an operating company. The latest filing they've made is that uh, they're now spending a billion a month to uh, just sit there and do nothing. And they're going to try to reduce that to probably a half a billion to maybe 300 million if they can. And uh, keep their expenses to a paltry $10 million a day to wait out the uh, virus and hopefully start cruising again. So... Don't be surprised if uh, a number of ships get laid up for a uh, longer time under a cold layup. Uh, maybe half the fleet, uh, if this goes much longer, a couple more months uh, or longer. And um, uh, a number of ships will be in a warm layup and very few will be in a hot ship layup. Uh, I can see uh, every ship being at least in a warm ship layup, which means a one week uh, firing up phase. And I can see the rest of the fleets going to a cold layup where they need between uh, roughly three weeks to come back. Just I didn't know if I mentioned that, but a cold layup takes three weeks to get a ship to start up again because you've got to bring in all the staff. You've got to get all the linens back. You've got to put all the mattresses down. You've got to get all the rooms ready. And then you have to test the systems, fire them up, get the engines going, make sure that the uh, the air conditioning systems, water filtration and sewage filtration, everything is running properly. Then you got to bring the Coast Guard in for inspections, and it's not just a 20-minute inspection. Days and days and all the systems... Uh, you got to bring your crew back, your your uh, bridge crew back. 
um, yeah, this is a, a three week turnaround minimum to get a ship back up. And of course, now it's more expensive. <laughs> You're dropping cash on the table, just getting the ship ready to sail to go get your first paying passenger. So cruise lines are going to be investing hundreds of millions of dollars in their fleets, probably billions, to keep everything up and going, hoping that we come back when we can come back. And uh, that's just a little overview for you of what uh, what uh, cruise line executives are facing right now. Just think about the marketing people, the ad campaigns they're going to have to put together trying to get us to uh, come on back, the marketing people, the promotions people. There will be, I feel, all kinds of deals, all kinds of promotions, and uh, I think they'll welcome us back with open arms, to say the least, when that time comes. In the meantime, we'll wait out the virus and see what happens. Uh, in the meantime, all of you out there, I want you to stay warm, stay safe, and stay healthy. Thank you for joining me again today. appreciate your viewing my videos, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.